is available as a parameter of that function. And then we say if if this if this page's ID is within the array of deleted item items IDs, in other words, if this returns anything other than minus one, uh, if this returns minus one, it means it's not in that array. So include that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this just says don't return anything if its ID is in that deleted array. Okay. Great. So now instead of passing the pages directly, we just pass the back end, which means in page admin we can do something like uh, well, we can do something like component did mount. This is a special function that React calls when the component has been added to the visible screen. So we can say something like uh, this set state in fact, we don't really even need to do that. We can do, for now, we can do something like this. State is that, and the pages are this, props, backend, all. Holy moly. And now instead of this props pages, we can do this. State pages. Let's see if that still works. I am dying to know if that still works. Error? No error. Time to delete a page. <laughs> yeah, except it's not South Africa, it's Wellington, New Zealand. <laughs> yes. It's switched police because there have been no burning baskets for a very long time. Okay, so this backend is working for us now. Um, in here, we can do something like this backend delete id. And. Well, this is going to remove it from the back end. Uh, sorry, we need to do this props back end. This is going to remove it from the back end, but it's not going to update how this component looks. Maybe we need to update the state as well. Maybe we need to say this set state pages is this props back end pages. Uh, <laughs> all. Sure, all. Okay, we can take this out because we should be able to see a difference now. Okay, it is the same accent. It is the same accent. I lived in South Africa for 28 years. I've only been in New Zealand for seven months. So <laughs> it is a South African accent. Okay, delete. <gasps> no ways. Okay, we're still not seeing a difference because we're not differentiating the titles here. But anyway, if we head into here and instead of doing just list item, we say something like this props title. We should see different titles in here. Oh, we don't. We don't see titles in here. Okay. The reason is because page admin is passing pages to each page instance, but that page instance isn't passing this down to its controls. We want to have something like uh, as props so that this inherits all the properties that it was given. Wow. Kind of messy, but anyway. Okay, now we have titles here. This is because we're filtering down. We're getting all the pages from the back end. We're giving them to page admin. For each page, we're giving that page's properties just spread out to the page item. And then the page is giving all of its properties spread out to the list and the editor. Now, there's a thing here, right? It is Ian Danforth. It is common to have. It is popular to have a single backend. Some people have multiple backends, and it starts to get into quite an architectural discussion. And perhaps good for another time. We're not going to look at it now. Okay. Okay. So. So okay, uh, we have these different titles here. Let's delete the contact us page. No ways. It totally works. Woohoo! Um, I will talk about the architectural stuff a different time because it's very interesting and there are some architectures that have sprung up and some that are recommended and it's not React as a community is not mature enough for 
de facto standards for every situation to have emerged. That's a very risky statement for me to make. But it just hasn't been around long enough for us to know, okay, for an application of X size, you should use this architecture. And for an application that has WebSockets, you should use this architecture. So it's not old enough yet. But there are some really good ones, and we'll talk about them another time. <laughs> uh, yeah, definite troll alert. Okay, so we're getting the props. Uh, let's do the editor quickly. I'm actually going to make this a longer stream if you want to hang around. Why not? Let's do the editor. Okay, so now we're passing these properties down and we can read it, render an editor out, but we also want to have a way of going back to just a list view, so like a cancel action, and updating the, uh, updating the page's properties. So, um, <laughs> we'll say something like on page on page update. This handle page update. Um, no, we'll just pass the props down. We're already getting the on page update passed down. <laughs> We're already getting the on page props update passed down. We'll, we'll forget about this now. All we want is on page cancel. This handle page cancel. Sweet, which means we need to have a new binding here. And a new thing here. Editing false. Edit. Okay, let's get a link to use. I did not study JavaScript, uh, well, at home, I guess, or on the job, I guess. <laughs> I didn't study it at a place. Uh, okay, let's, we've got the editor here, so let's make this a multi-line thing, and we'll just put one link in here for this props on page cancel. Because we want to get back out of the editor view, right? Cancel. Okay, let's move this on click nonsense because we don't need it. We don't need that. Okay, refresh. Can we get in and out of edit mode? Let's see. Burning baskets edit. Cancel. Burning baskets edit. Cancel. Cool. Thanks for being here. So, uh, we have an edit view here, but it doesn't really have any form controls yet or anything. Um, yeah, definitely there's good resources online. You can go to Team Treehouse, you can go to lynda.com, you can go to SitePoint Premium, lots and lots of awesome places to do this. Let's do some form stuff. Um, okay. Input type text. Uh, let's leave the name stuff out. On change. <laughs> Chance. On change. This handle change. Handle page change? Sure, why not? And value this state title. So this is the title drop down. Let's uh, add some formatting to this because <laughs> it looks terrible. Okay, let's do that. And let's put this stuff on new lines. Really? Do we really want to do that? That looks gross. Anyway, there's title, there's segment. Let's just do two fields for now because that's all I care about. Segment. We'll also give this a name. So, name, um, segment, title. Okay. Now we need a handle page change function. So, handle page change. And this gets an event. I'll just call it event. Uh, now, I can't remember exactly what the details are of this, so I'll console log it out. Let's have a look what this looks like. Mm hmm. Okay. Edit. <laughs> Title of undefined. 
yeah, it's difficult to get used to this kind of markup, but you know, <laughs> once you do, it, actually, it's not that bad. Um, now we're doing this state title and this state segment, but we don't actually have a state yet. So we'll do something like this state, and this is one of those times where having state is sort of unavoidable. We kind of have to do this. Title is this props title, but we'll limit it as much as we can. Segment. Okay, now we should have those values displayed when we click edit, I hope. Let's see. Well, look at that. It's poorly formatted. We can probably do something about that. Maybe we just put these in divs. Close that off. <laughs> just put these in divs and edit it again. Any C++ replacement in the works at all? Do you mean a newer version of C++ or an alternative language that makes it a little bit better? Hmm? There we go. So we have our title, we have our segment, and we have our cancel button, which will get us back to this view. If you're looking for newer versions of C++, no idea. If you're looking for alternative things which do things as well as C++, Go is a good alternative for, especially for applications that require high concurrency. Go, Golang, Go. Go is a good alternative. For the kinds of things that C++ is often used to make. Is Go rear? Go real? Is go real? Golang.org. This is go. It's very low level. It's very good for concurrency things. Um, I don't want to talk about go right now, but it's a cool language. Okay, we've got a problem here because if we do something like this, the input doesn't update. We need to update it because remember we're setting the value of the input to this state segment or this state title. You can go interface with uh, and inline ASM. I have no idea. I haven't done that much go to know. <laughs> I don't even know that basic feature. Can go interface with ASM. Yep, AM. Let's do ASM because that's the question. C, C Sharp is awesome. I used to do C Sharp. It's great. I miss it very much. Uh, I don't know. Google that stuff. That's a good question. Okay, so remember we're setting the value of this to the state segment, and the state isn't changing. So every time we type this out, it's re-rendering that component, but not with the new value. What we need to do is we need to take this stuff. So what do we get from synthetic events? We get target, which has a name attribute, if I'm not mistaken. Name, 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 name title. Okay, so we have the events target, event.target.name. And uh, let's see, let's collapse this again. Where's the value? Where's the value? Where do I find the value? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, targets. How do I get the value of this again? I can't remember exactly. Hmm. Event value? Is that a thing? Wow, that is not a thing. Uh, okay. Well, we know the thing that we want to trigger is let name is event target name. So that's the first thing we want to trigger, but 
I can't remember exactly how to get this value. So let's go to the React docs. 